So welcome Sadhya to the show and thank you so much for taking time out. You have created a brand for yourself and uh, you know I see the massive amount of followers you have on LinkedIn. Uh, I would like to understand quite a few things from you from the HR perspective, from the personal branding perspective. So uh, can you can you tell us about yourself first so that viewers get to know what Sadhya views and Sadhya is all about? Yeah, thanks Basil for inviting me to your show. Great to you Sadhya. Uh, before going to discuss about me, my journey, Satya, I would like to tell about my first. So, I am a Pukta Gitar developer. So, this is an engineer from HR professional, micro growth partner for different startups company. As well as also, I am doing article writing, micro learning. So, for Satya, today we are interacting. So, before starting any journey, I would like to start from one of my beautiful quotes. Unleash your inner soul to discover self. Again, I repeat, unleash your inner soul to discover self because life is a most beautiful gift from God. Whatever you want to do, do it right now, right here. Because time is very precious. You can't find it, you can't recapture it. Okay. So, you see, in a surrounding, each and everybody are unique. Like you are a podcast, video podcaster. I'm a micro blogger. So, we have actually differentiated ourselves in different aspects, although actually we are still to a, a particular professor. So our career is like two ways. It's a deep career. Okay. One, at one point of time, actually, we are focusing in our domain knowledge. Okay. I am in culture. And at the other end, actually, we are also focusing on our creativity. Because passion and creativity are the factors which differentiates ourselves all among crowds. Because mm-hmm. if you are not able to come in the comfort zone, it will not help you out in any way. You are right. in the crowd. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I think very valid and very good points are, uh, that really shows the, the kind of uh, post you do and the kind of blogs you do uh, clearly shows where from uh, where that perspective is coming from. And uh, you rightly mentioned that it's very important to, you know, to keep both the sides going uh, on the side because uh, at the end of the day, you have to come out of your comfort zone, do things differently to stand out of the crowd. Uh, so great yeah. points, uh, Satya. Uh, let's let's talk about Satya views a little bit more and understand what Satya views are all about. So it uh, started four years back because as I clearly mentioned before, I am engineer and HR professional. So when I, uh, I was in my engineering career during my job in engineering days, so I used to work for HR aspects in some ways, like doing welfare amenities, CSR activity for my company. So that time actually I used to uh, check the employees or people to so their understanding what they are issues and how to resolve it. Although I am not into full scale user. So from uh, I used to write different types of articles. Okay, all is actually coming in uh, WhatsApp startup. So one find that somebody told me actually. Why actually you are not actually putting it in a particular platform so that actually it will create audience. Because see, uh, currently trends have already been changed. So whatever thing actually we would like to share, it should be crisp and concise. Okay. So one point also I would like to say, uh, share with you right now. Short and sweet is better than long and lack. Okay. Whatever the concept you are having in your mind, make it make it concise because if you will find uh, uh, insert one of the app, which is actually for news. So what they are doing, they are summarizing a particular news and actually they have limited keywords. Be it Pinterest, be it Twitter, everybody actually right now going to micro blogging. You know, it will save your time and at the same time it will give the good fun. So from there actually the cab is comes to picture. And uh, here actually I am my main focus is to drive it towards people connect because uh, the major motive behind is actually to connect to the audience all across the nation, bring them to a particular common platform and encourage them to share their views on a particular topic. Be it HR, be it recent care, be it any other thing. Okay, that's what there is all about. That's great. I, I think uh, uh, you, I, I've been through your profile and uh, you have changed your, uh, you know, the roles in your career. And 
we mostly hear it in the ecosystem that when you change uh, the role and when you go for a different role, you mostly don't succeed or it's very difficult to actually get into a different role. So what was your perspective to do it and how was your experience till now? Uh, yeah, see, career transition will happen at any point of time. You take the example of KFC founder. Okay, he started this KFC story at the age of 65. If he can do it, why can't he? Okay, you, you should not tremble your feet. Whatever you want to do, unless your you know production even uh, do this particular thing, then actually your identifying your character, go for it. Because there are many hindrances will come around you. When actually you are coming out of comfort zone, be it family constraint, be it uh, financial personality constraint, be it aid, be it actually company constraint. So you just need to identify what exactly drives you, what actually will not limit you. Because don't limit yourself at any point of time. Okay. Right. So. I have finished my career for engineering. I was nowhere in Asia. Nobody knows me. What exactly I am doing? Why exactly I am coming here? But when actually uh, I have transitioned this particular career, I have also faced many hurdles in my career. When I came to Mumbai for the first time after my campus placement, nobody knows me. I used to actually teach many people to get them understand what exactly HR is because HR is a part of and it actually excites me. Keep diving into it. Okay, so it depends on you. Huh? So don't stay relevant to a particular topic. Secondly, no need to settle it down. Okay, if you are settled down at a particular uh, point of time, then actually you are working in a comfort zone. You are not actually ready to come out of it. Okay, right. then actually how do you get success in life? So that's actually drives you more. And clarity is important because if you don't have clarity in your mind, it will not actually help you to drive. Right. That's and I think uh, uh, that's uh, that's the most crucial point because uh, you should actually know where you want to take your career at the end of the day. And uh, um, if I think that, uh, so I even I changed my role uh, last year. I, I I was in into sales and then I moved to product management. So. Um, you definitely need to learn a lot when you move to a different role. But uh, if you are, if you have become comfortable in your life and you are, see, there are two things. If you are comfortable and you are not enjoying it. And if you are enjoying the role, then definitely that role makes sense to you. But if you are comfortable, not enjoying, not liking the job, and then you are just continuing in it, that's, that's not going to take you anywhere. So very valid points on that part. Uh, so being an HR uh, yourself and uh, you have... Uh, you have also created a personal brand for yourself and uh, many people know you uh, over LinkedIn as uh, Satya views and everything. So uh, how important it is to create a personal brand on LinkedIn and also as a platform, how do you think uh, LinkedIn as a platform is? We know that definitely it, it, it's, a, it's a great platform uh, for uh, the, the workforce, but uh, being an HR, how important do you think an employee should put his time on LinkedIn, uh, you know, invest his time on LinkedIn, reach out to people, talk to people, understand what they have to do? Yeah, see, uh, credibility matters a lot in today's era. That's the first point I would like to share it. So second is PR is most important aspect. See, it's your brand, it's company's brand. So everybody is actually coming right now and actually they are sharing any information. In LinkedIn, actually every second you'll get many information, many new data. So what are actually happening all around the globe? Be it in your domain, be it other domain, you should know that particular thing. And LinkedIn is a very valid platform. Many companies, they are coming right now, they are actually sharing the input, their information, what they are doing right now, or their next plan. So everything comes here. Second thing, actually, see in LinkedIn, there are two different types of profile actually you file. One is the influencer file and second one is the decision maker. Okay, they are actually the most active right now in LinkedIn. So be a student, be a, uh, uh, if you are starting your career, uh, early career time, or actually you are influencer. So everybody there is actually sharing knowledge. So reverse mentoring, all those things that you come to here. So if you don't know about a particular thing, just Google it, go through that particular article and gain some knowledge. It will build confidence in you. Okay. So that's why actually LinkedIn is the most vital tool and the powerful tool right now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It is not job posting and all other things. The networking matters a lot. And you can avoid in the platform. So leverage your name. 
right right and i i think it helps a lot in uh, in switching careers and you know to be able to to understand what companies are doing as you rightly pointed out you, you can stay updated with the most uh, you know uh, of what the companies have in uh, ta- as a target in 2020 or 2025 and uh, there's a lot of plethora of knowledge uh, present over linkedin so i think uh, definitely everyone should be there and uh, understand what the companies are doing and what uh, the leadership thinks about the company uh, let's get to the hr point of view uh, where uh, you know i, I think uh, at many organizations they take hr as a support function and uh, this notion itself is somewhat changing for some companies some companies are still there so what's your point of view around that See, HR is all about human relation, according to me. So you are creating relation, you are building relation, and you are maintaining relation. So HR is no more actually strategic or actually the support of it is more towards strategy. Because HR has evolved from welfare to personal, personal to generalist, generalist to business battery, and right now they have shifted to corporate of excellence. They are business intelligence. They are on demand service. So everything has been shifted. It is not like that actually. You are limiting yourself like the back door of the function. You are not actually going to involve in the different kinds of business decision making. And HR is the value creator for the organization. It will make or break the organization. Because you see, different companies those are actually right now focusing on Gen Z and Gen Z X. So they have actually differentiated in terms of policies, patterns. They have created culture. And HR is the value creator. That's why I'm rightly thinking you because. Culture is created by HR only because he is the driver, he is the maker of the organization who can change the notion of the liberty profile. Because there are five ways actually. HR is uh, working right now. Embrace the technology. What is actually happening right now? How exactly you are changing? Because Chrome was not built in a day. Okay, it will take some time to change the notion. Yes, it has been changing. I am continuing to change. You can take the example of Amazon. So they have right now introduced one. Policy is recommended. So it is for women. Those who have already left their career due to certain issues, and they want to bring them back to as the next career. That is the second career. So why actually all these things happen? So HR has actually thought about it. So take example of diversity inclusion. So inclusion is actually matters a lot. How exactly are include all this generation all at the organization? Because you will find baby boomers, those who are in mid fifty, mid thirty. Mid forty, those who are actually they are right now entering to the market in era twenty twenty. That is ten years. Okay, all these things are coming together, and we have to create a collaborative approach where actually we can focus and try to work as the organization is going to do. Right, and. Uh, uh... coming to the uh, coming to the another point which i think you mentioned also somewhere that uh, there is a uh, there are different type of workforce which is present while we are working in the company so uh, which is called intergenerational workforce so uh, what's your perspective on that part uh, which is happening in the companies and how companies are taking care of that yeah see generational workforce actually it's one of the diverse topics right now and also the most was what in the term So one study has been uh, done in 2011. So according to its intergenerational cohesion, is one of the three most important risks in today's workforce because here in a particular album you will find baby boomers, you will find Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z. So their mentality, their working style, their approach towards working, their way of communication, everything different. So how exactly you are, can actually learn from that particular thing and also can blend it with common platform because this. Baby boomers, those who are actually they are more uh, focused in terms of communication style, but one to one approach. In case of Gen Z, you will find them they are very much extravagant in nature. They are more interested to discuss about a particular topic on social platform. To so take example of this thing, they are more focused to a discussion related to your email senders and also SMS. So how exactly you are doing all these things? Collaborative approach. Second thing. Whether you are flexible or you are actually collaborative, third thing actually you have to avoid the stereotype thinking. Because I am giving you one example. One meeting is going on. They are actually mid thirty, mid forty people. They are actually five to six people. They are actually discussing about a particular topic. They have not actually come to a conclusion about that particular meeting. Okay, so one fine day, the senior actually has discussed with one of his subordinates. 
it's it's so hard only we are going to resolve it. And that why I was actually in May 20. Mm-hmm. So we have uh, brought up one great idea, which is company that actually we have to change the approach. We can't actually discuss the silo. You want to discuss in a particular age group. Don't actually limit yourself. Second thing, actually learn from one another because if I am tech savvy. You are actually good at something, so I should learn something from you. Be it actually you are older than me or not. Just that the way different thinking comes to picture in HR perspective. And many companies actually they are right now entering this particular aspect. So entering and reverse entering, it will help the organization to grow in a particular fashion to drive and to achieve the mission. That's great. Uh, I think. Uh... there's a there's a very important question i think this is the most important question of all what what is a perfect resume according to you so uh, you might have seen a lot of them um, so i uh, want to understand from an hr perspective that what's a perfect resume that a person should make and what things they should keep in mind while they are creating a resume as per you uh, according to me no resume is perfect in this world If there is one idealism, I should actually share it to you before actually we discuss it now right now. So according to me, there are five to ten points actually we just need to consider while actually sharing our resume. What type of uh, cover letter we are actually preparing? Because cover letter is the executive summary of your particular resume. Because whatever achievement you have achieved, it should actually match to the job requirement of a particular organization. This is the first point I would like to share. Second thing regarding your mail ID. We have uh, seen many times actually empty mail ID. John Smith, Cyber, okay. Dot at Chicken Dot Com. So make it professional. What is the font you are using? Stick to it. Ten to twelve font. That is right. the font that you need to capture. What are the key skills? Actually, that job is required. We are not actually going through that particular journey of a particular organization. What we are doing, we are just clicking on the apply button and we are sharing. Then actually, we are expecting one call actually should come from HR. And uh, he will hire you, or she will hire you. It is not like that. Whether actually your skill is matching, whether your work is matching, whatever the achievement you have actually achieved in your career, it is matching to the requirement. Everything matters a lot. At the same time, actually make your your presentable. And you can see a certain subheader. Okay, one regarding your achievement, regarding your skills, regarding your professional career. Make it super chronological order. In terms of education, in terms of your career summary, so everything actually makes a perfect resume. And mind it, within one to two pages, actually you have to complete your resume. It is not like a more than two pages. So maximum what happens actually, person is having ten years of experience, and he has actually shared a resume which is having five pages or three pages. We don't have to waste time. No? So. Thank you. Right, so I think the length matters a lot, and then you have to be uh, very professional in the uh, email perspective. That uh, so very uh, you know very good point being raised by you on that part. So uh, coming back to the technology perspective, so uh, how important do you think that one should be updated with the latest technology? Be it they are in uh, they are working for a technology company or in a technology function, but. Uh, how important it is as per you to be to stay updated of what is happening in the industry yeah so see right now we are working in a digital era is the first thing so business intelligence ux design artificial intelligence everything comes to picture right now whatever the field is working so many companies many organizations they are actually entering their internal employees to Obviously, they are existing skills so that actually you are in the market that is just great. So according to one survey by World Economic Forum, 65% job will be obsolete five years down the line. And from HR perspective, 30% job will be obsolete five years down the line. So yeah. it is like that. So exactly you are learning right now. Be in your job, learn some new skills which is relevant to your organization, relevant to the market. Okay, because again I am telling you one thing. Technology is your friend. Don't actually treat as your enemy. Okay, it will actually help you in terms of timeline, in terms of accuracy. Because human information you can't actually ignore completely. Because human mindset is the first one to drive this particular technology aspect. Okay, it's the human who actually invent this particular technology. So where actually this technology is from? Because data, we are having many data. I'm giving you one example. So 
while actually we are conducting meeting mo may actually we are capturing many but don't you think actually the mo is a data source from where actually we get many information are not true but actually not actually taking that particular thing while actually we are doing data for me so all these things are Coming in the business industry, what is happening in the computer market? What is happening in the geographical industry? Everything actually is just not okay. So how is that? All these things, what some organized certain best practices are there. It is not only for you. You have to blend it. You have to blend it. After it, after that, you also need to because budget constraint is there, management aspect is also there. So all these things actually come into picture when actually we are doing certain just upgrading. So you will find in Singapore actually government of Singapore they are encouraging their employees to upskill themselves. They are also giving certain tax rebates to the organisation. Those were actually encouraging this, and it will come definitely to India. Two years or one year down the line, I think government of India is also thinking about this. That's why this digital India it has already implemented. Right, and I think uh, a very valid point on upskilling uh, because uh, at the end of the day, uh, uh, companies are also having internal education programs where there are so many videos. There, there are like departments for it, learning and development departments who are totally focused on the development of the employee. And it also is a job of the manager to actually tell the uh, you know his reportee that this is what he should be looking at. This is what they should learn and they should uh, upskill themselves. So. Uh, on that point as per organizations what are organizations uh, you know expecting from a manager and the employee itself in terms of the uh, to identify and develop the talent at the end of the day all right so see, great managers will create great organizations and great managers will develop great employees without great managers there is no great team okay right. i'm smart manager So you need to identify those talents who are actually acting as a driver in the long run. If you are identifying those talents inside your organization, why actually you are going to buy that talent from outside the organization? Because see, when actually we are talking about buy and sell strategy, suppose I am UX designer, you are having requirement, you don't have any employee internally in your organization who can do that particular work. So for that actually you are going to hire me. Okay, and I am actually charging much for you. Organization. So in that actually equilibrium will be hampered. Internal clarity will be hampered. So just uh, identify those individuals, those who are actually tech savvy, those who are keen on learning new aspects. Identify right. those talents, keep investing on it, harvesting on those talents to get the next future leader. Okay. Right. Second thing I would like to uh, tell: think ahead, plan. When actually you are going for any interview, the uh, hiring manager is generally asking you how to find out this project. Well, exactly. You want to see yourself five years down the line. I am asking to those hiring managers: Do we have any plan five years down the line? Are there any talent strategy in your organization? I don't think so. Any managers they are not thinking about this. They are only thinking as like me candidate. I need to hire. She is like me or she is like me. She can actually work like me. So it's not like that. You need to think broader. You need to think actually what exactly happens around the globe. How exactly you can interact in all those talent. Seeing inclusively, so see inclusive is something what we are actually our mindset will be broader. We are thinking from vast five point of view. We are not actually thinking about the particular narrow minded approach. So approach will be uh, broader. Like the first thing I would like to do is be data driven. See, my, those who are actually thinking about the individual development plan. So how exactly we are referring on that particular individual development plan for a particular employee who are starting their career or who are in the mid career level. They are set to five years down the line. So, How actually we can actually make them industry leaders? I first done so that is the most of the smart managers. So that's why I'm telling they are not smart managers. If they are not smart managers, the company will not be smart. And if company is not smart, they will not be actually in the market for long run. <laughs> True that. And uh, so, uh, what's your uh, you know anything you would like to share with the youngsters who are just passing out of the college and will soon be looking for the job? So, uh, what what's your uh, you know one if you have to give one thought thought process and you want to share with them your thought process what would be your uh, you know uh, what would you like to share with them at the end of the day yeah yeah two type of notion actually we are finding in college graduate mm-hmm. so when i uh, in my beginning college so many friends they are telling just to pass the paper get passed in the college and get a job it is not like that okay mm-hmm. so when i actually we are Many hours from campus to corporate. It's like different aspects. 
whatever we have this thought in our college this is not applicable in your first one so stay relevant do research okay there are many articles many ebooks are e magazines are available in the market so just subscribe it whatever you are understanding you just actually note down in a particular paper it will help you a lot because see uh, self help books and self help knowledge so the two things actually which will drive you okay which will build your confidence level because nobody will perfect in this part and if you are going to have a particular candidate actually we are whatever we have been taught in the college everything actually we have to do in our corporate world is not like that even in mba college also i am telling you we have been taught actually this bd pia so they are mentoring us they are actually investing their time they of their self but all these things actually will not help to a certain extent what actually drives you i just want to message on that particular topic okay you make up some year to college you make up year one college at that point of time you still actually talk a lot people will actually admire you for your knowledge your skill set your interest your dedication you will not think out from which college you have come out right okay. and i think uh, this uh, whole thought process of coming out from a good college uh, at the end of the day it does work in india how, no matter how how much we want to ignore it that you have uh, if you have a, have a brand on your resume at least you will get an interview at the end of the day but after that proving yourself is uh, that uh, knowledge is something which helps you to pass through uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, coming back to the career perspective, so uh, anything you would like to share with uh, the people who are looking for jobs on LinkedIn or uh, even outside the organizations, and also your point of view on the people who are trying to switch roles internally uh, within the organization. Yeah. See, so, uh, career transition always a pain point for anybody. Be it mid yeah. career, be it early career, or be it late career. If it is inside the organization, that's the IJP, that is internal job posting, came to picture. The basic motive behind internal job posting is to elevate those employees, those who are interested to switch their career inside the organization. But sometimes actually it is not happening like that. It depends on the board manager, my mindset. So you see, if actually I am your reporting manager, you are my subordinate, and you want to actually switch from my domain to other domain. Okay, and I don't want to actually release you. Then what yeah. you can do? So mm -hmm. you will actually look for opportunity outside the organization. And at that time, actually, company will suffer. Company is also much suffer. Yes. Yes. So it depends on the market. So accordingly, you have to act. Mm -hmm. Every time this idea will not uh, matter a lot for the organization. Right. and uh, so that was uh, the internal switching part uh, the another part of my question was that if if somebody is looking for a job on linkedin so what should be yeah. his uh, you know uh, his strategy to find that particular job so uh, as per you how should he reach out to the right set of people and what he should do yeah so see in linkedin actually many job postings are coming yeah. so we will find that out of eight Ten out of eight skills or out of ten skills, how many skills are matching? So you can identify that particular skill set. What the skills actually required for a particular job? You just need to jot down those points. Whether you are capable enough or actually you are very much comfortable to work on that particular skill set, that matters a lot. According, you just want to prepare that particular skill set level and also define your LinkedIn profile. It is not like I am working for X and I am actually doing some skill Y. And when actually I am going for job, a particular job, I am not offering that particular wide skill set. So skill set difference is there. And also another thing I have found in LinkedIn also, many people they have not actually prepared their LinkedIn profile in a such a manner that actually it is talking about their qualification, their achievement, and their skill set level. So make your LinkedIn profile presentable like your CV or resume. Right. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes what happens in LinkedIn people apply for any US or UK organization or IT industry. So they are not preparing this LinkedIn profile. They are actually now going to your profile on LinkedIn, downloading your profile, and they are searching. So in ATS, if 45% to 50% profile is matching, then your CV is going to the garbage, which is not going to be considered. So that's right, what we are right. doing. and i think a very valid point on creating a good profile because uh, there are a lot of uh, you know a lot of hr people who are looking for the right set of people and they do come and visit your profile and if your profile itself is not uh, you know updated you might miss out on those opportunities which are coming your way 
Apart from that, I think there was uh, there's one point which I would like to add. If uh, there's somebody who is looking uh, for a job or uh, a particular role, they should reach out to those set of people who are the leaders in that particular. Uh, so I'm looking for a product manager role, or I'm looking for a you know AI developer role. So they should reach out to somebody who is already there in the organization, understand that what that company is looking for, if they can refer them or something like that. And it's it LinkedIn makes it very easy for you. You can reach out to anybody to everybody, or you can re request anybody to everybody to help you introduce those people. So I think there can be a lot of things which can be done over LinkedIn. Which people should use uh, it for their own benefits. So uh, thank you, Satya, for sharing all that this information with us. I think very very valid points and very good points you raise, and I think our viewers would be uh, hugely benefited from all the points you shared. Uh, any last comments you would like to make to you know to the viewers to from your perspective, uh, from the HR perspective, that this is what uh, the uh, you know they should follow in their life as per the career perspective. Yeah, before going to answer to that question, I would like to ask something to you. So yeah. you are a product development manager. Okay. Yeah. How actually this podcast to actually comes to picture in your mind? And what drives you? So I I started uh, podcasting for the product management perspective only. So uh, Green Tea with Ashish uh, was started la last year and that time I was only talking to the product managers. So at the end of the day, my perspective was that I'll get to interact with people. I will get to create content also, and I'll get to learn also. So uh, there will there will be three things which I will achieve from just doing this thing. So uh, going back to last year, uh, if you see my uh, you know first few episodes which I released, uh, there were like four or five episodes which were just of, with the product managers. So I just uh, you know interviewed these uh, product leaders in the industry understood what is the most you know what is most relevant to read uh, what are the books which are available and how i can learn around this so but that's why it all started and now it has become to uh, it has come to this point where i started liking it to talk to people understand their point of views and uh, build a social relationship with people and uh, you know there is a hell lot of learning which comes out of this for me uh, so at the end of the day it's hugely beneficial for me so i'm not doing it for anything else uh, i i get to meet people i uh, get to understand their perspective and uh, at the end of the day it's hugely beneficial for me also we are doing a great job keep Thank you, Satya. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, coming back to my last question, any uh, last comment uh, to the people, to the viewers uh, on the on their career perspective uh, from the HR point of view? Yeah, see, don't stick to a particular role or a particular explore new opportunity in your life. Okay, you never know actually what actually it will drive you to reach to that particular point. You never imagine. Because see, from HR perspective, when I started my career from engineer, then to HR, and then right now I'm doing microblogging. So what actually drives you, what actually excites you to do that particular thing? Don't stick to a particular field. Be it in, because in India, what happens generally, people are thinking about engineering field, medical, and all those. So but there are many other fields that you would like to explore that opportunity. Okay. So drive to the person and make it profitable. The passion turns into profit in many ways. It's just a matter of time. Right, right. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Satya, for sharing that with us. And uh, lovely talking to you. I think uh, uh, the points which were raised, I think I'll keep them with myself for always. That you know, these are these are some great, great points which came from you. And I think the my whole perspective around the HR field and what HR thinks uh, has changed a bit. And uh, for a positive point of view. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, we'll catch up again. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank Have you. a good day. Bye.